Super. Thank you so much, Felicia. You do such a great job with the intro. I really, really appreciate it. Well, hello, beauty friends. I am Meredith Roddy from Beautalon and Artistic Wire. It has been a couple weeks since I have joined you all to teach a class for the Michaels Community Classroom, and I'm so, so glad and so grateful to be back. Um, if you are a new student. If you're here for the very first time, please let me know. I love to be able to, um, to greet everyone and say hello and welcome. And of course, if you are an, an old beady friend who's been with me for lo these almost two years that I've been teaching these wonderful classes for the Michaels Community Classroom, um, welcome back. It's really, really nice to have you here and great to be here. Um, it looks like we have some new people for class. Um, everybody seems to be new so far in the, co the comments and I don't believe that. So where, where are my oldies? <laughs> my oldies but goodies. I wanna see who's here joining me today. So for class today, um, and as Felicia said, this class is being recorded and you can go back in about 24 to 48 hours on the Michael's Classes uh, YouTube channel to rewatch. So if there's something that you missed, if something that I said wasn't quite so clear that you need to go back, you can um, you can feel free to go back and fast forward and skip through all the chit chat in the beginning to your heart's content. <laughs> um, I love seeing the I love seeing the comments come through, and I appreciate that. And that is a good um, reminder for me to remind you that if you do have a question, please go ahead and write that over in the comments. I'm pretty good at seeing things as they come through, um, but if I do miss your comment because lots of things are scrolling through, just feel free to, um, to ask that question one last time. So today what we are going to be doing is making a bead soup necklace. So we all have, um, or we should have, if we've been doing this for even a, a little bit of time in our studios, um, what I like to and what a lot of beaders refer to as bead soup. That is that container that <clears throat> You have where all of the spare extra leftover beads wind up. These are beads that I have found on my floor. These are beads that I have rescued from nooks and crannies on various surfaces that I have beaded on. They are beads that are left over from different projects. This is the perfect stash busting or bead soup using project. And we are going to learn how to do bead crochet. So if you are a crocheter, this is going to be super, super easy. And you could probably teach me a thing or two. I used to be a pretty avid crocheter. I haven't done it in quite a while. Um, I'm a, a little bit of a um, an equal opportunity crafter and I love, um, everything from knitting and crochet to paper crafts and everything in between. If it's in Michael's, there's a chance that I've probably tried it and enjoyed it and then moved on to the next thing to try out. I like to, to gather and collect crafting skills and crafting supplies, as you can see from the Beetle on Satellite office, aka my home studio behind me. So we're going to be doing some crochet with beads. Super easy. Um, and once you get it, you get it. And that's one of my favorite types of, um, of skills in beading. It's rep repetition. It is, um, it's meditative. And again, takes a little bit of practice to get it the first time, but once you have it, no problem. We're going to do a very easy finishing technique today as well. We don't even have to worry about a clasp. So I think that um, without further ado, Felicia, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take that overhead camera for me. I'm going to put the glasses on. My most important tool there is. I think I need to clean my glasses off a little bit. It looks like we've got some good, some good old hats here in the comments as well. I um, mean, of course, if you're watching on the replay, I won't be able to interact with you in person, but you can always go ahead and post the project that you make on your socials. Use the hashtag make it with beetle on. You can also tag me. I love seeing what people have made for my classes. And my Instagram is Meredith Joy designs. So go ahead, follow me, tag me, let me see, let me see your work. So let me show you what we're making today. Um, really quickly, of course, it's already gotten 
tangled up. I was showing Felicia before we went live. This is actually, this part of the project is going to be a class that we do later on in the month. I believe it's March 30th is this class. But what I hung this class on is what we're making today, which is a crocheted or really the best, the better description for it is a chain stitch because we're not really going through these loops any more time. We're really doing a chain stitch, but it's more commonly um, referred to as bead crochet. So that's, that's what we use. But if it makes it easier to think of it as a chain stitch, please go ahead and do that because that's really, that's, that's all we're doing. So you don't even have to know how to crochet. If you can do a chain stitch, you are golden. So I wanted to show a couple of different variations on this stitch before we get started. This is one of my favorite projects that I have made. And this is using the same material that we are using today, but I am using smaller beads and a little bit of a variation. I'm doing many more chain stitches in between each of these beads than we're going to be showing today. So again, <clears throat> we're learning a skill and there are a gazillion different ways and different directions that your creativity can go from here. Okay, so let's see, as we're working our way through show and tell, it does not have to be the material, the beelon, we're gonna to get to talking about that in a second, that we are using today. This actually was crocheted or chain stitched with artistic wire. This is actually a class that I did for the Michaels Community Classroom a couple of months ago. And you can of course go back after class today and look on the Michaels Classroom YouTube page. I don't know why I have a mental block on saying that, but you guys know where to find the videos by now. This project is another class that I did for Michaels. Really, really fun. And again, just a bead soup. I had a whole bunch of wooden beads left over for some, from some other projects that I was doing. And I created this design. Now, these are um, actually recycled Roman glass beads, but I wanted to just show, um, mostly because this is one of my favorite necklaces, um, how using different sizes, different shapes, and different textures of beads can work. This again is made with artistic wire. So I don't recommend starting with wire. Um, starting with the beelon is going to be easier, A, on your hands and B, on your brain. Um, but different places that you can go with that. And of course you can also use beetle on bead stringing wire to crochet. I don't have an example of that um, here on my, um, on my workstation, but you can definitely crochet with beading wire as well. Um, and all different kinds of fibers really, but you can add beads to them, which makes it so much more fun. And if you're multi-crafty, um, you already have all of the materials that you need, or an excuse to buy more. And isn't that the best thing is to have an excuse to go down to Michael's and do a little bit of shopping. Okay, so this is the material that we are going to be using today. This is the, the Beetleon, Beelon Tex 210 Nylon Cord. This is actually um, upholstery thread, if you can believe that. That's what the Tex 210 name comes from. This is available in Michael's in three different colors, white, do we call it gray or do we call it silver? White, gray, and black. White, gray, and black. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a minute there with the Spanish and the French to get that to compute to my brain. Oh my goodness. White, gray, and black. Um, and this stuff is great for um, doing macrame, for stringing, for knotting, all different kinds of things. I really, really like this cord a lot. And I've used it in a lot of past classes as well. Finn's over there doing some sort of digging on the floor. Come back over and say hi. Our beady friends are here, remember? Finn always comes over at 1, 1 58 Eastern time to, um, to come over and say hello. A very good question just came through in our chat, which was, what do I think of using Argentium silver wire? I feel great about using Argentium silver wire. Um, that is a very special precious metal wire. Um, I would of course recommend a 26 gauge or a even a 28 gauge um, for doing that bead crochet, but wow, wouldn't that look beautiful here? Let me pull the silver one over. This of course is done in artistic wire, um, but using a precious, precious metal, um, it, 
if you had, you know, some nice gemstones, something a little fancier, um, that would be, that would be great. Now, Bilon is the Beetleon brand of this Text 210 cord. There are other brands out in the market as well. Um, but our, our Beetleon brand is called Beetleon. But if it's, a, it's, if it's a Text 210 cord, it will be great for you. And you can, like I said, you can do this with silk. You can do this with ribbon. You can do this with leather. I mean, so many different possibilities. But today what we're doing is we are using the Beetleon. So I have gone ahead and I have strung up a bead soup mix. I had a whole bunch of beads in this jar and I dumped them out <laughs> into this tray. And what I find, especially given my, um, my inclination toward order and pattern in my beadwork, I try to just kind of do a little jingle there and then just pick the beads that I want in a line. I don't think about it. I don't plan it out um, because it's very difficult for me to do something in a random pattern. And I would love to know in the comments from our friends who are watching live, whether or not that's something that you struggle with as well. Um, are you, can you very easily do a, um, do a random pattern um, or do you always look for it? A random pattern is really a, a misnomer, isn't it? Or a, um, an oxymoron. Um, I, I need things to be even. I need little bead, big bead, little bead, big bead. And so creating a, a strand or a beaded group like this is very, very challenging for me. Um, I hope that it is easier <laughs> for others. Um, but again, that's how I, I cope with it. I pour everything into a, into a container. I shake it up. I let my beads fall as they may. And then I don't even, sometimes I don't even look. I just pick them up and go as, as I go. So I strung up about 12 inches of beads. Now this measurement will definitely vary depending on how many chain stitches you do in between, how big your beads are, what shape your beads are, how long you want your necklace to be. Um, all different kinds of factors go into figuring this out. Will I need, use all of these beads? I might. Will I need to put more beads on? Also, I might. But I like to start with about 12 inches when I do this project because I know that's going to at least get me to a 16 inch necklace. And as I'm going along, I can make some design, um, some design choices. So I work from the spool and this is actually a good, um, a good moment to talk about working from the spool. I do this almost all the time. Um, this morning I was doing a lot of bead stringing, worked directly from the beetle on spool. Um, if I am making beaded flowers, I work directly from the, um, the spool of wire. If I am doing a lot of necklaces on using wildfire and the bead spinner, for example, I'll work directly from the spool. So you don't have to worry about what, about how much thread you need, as long as you have enough on your spool. Um, and this, you know, it will, it will shrink as you're, you're using it. Um, so you do have to be wary that you might run out on your spool, but for the most part, working from the spool is the way to go. Now, my go-to crochet hook that I use for most of my projects is a size H crochet hook. Um, I have done this project with much, much smaller crochet hooks. Um, and I have also done it with larger crochet hooks. Um, the size of the hook matters a little bit, right? Because just like in, um, in crochet, you have to think about your gauge, right? How big these loops are going to end up. So these loops were obviously made with a much smaller crochet hook. And these loops were made with the size crochet hook that I'm using today, that that um, H number five just happens to be the one that I have the most of. Um, it's the special one that I have down here in my studio. But again, if you have different size crochet hooks, experiment. See, um, see what happens if you use a larger hook or if you use a smaller hook. Um, that's, that's part of what I love about this project is it's very forgiving and it's very, um, it's very easy to substitute 
everything, <laughs> which is a sign of a good project, right? If you like the technique, but you want to do it in a different way, very easy to do. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing that we are going to do after we have strung on about, about a foot of random beads is we're going to make a slip knot in this end. And the way, and we're going to leave about six inches I'm not great at doing things in precise measurements. And I love when I watch um, like Danielle or some of the other, um, the other people who teach classes for the Michaels um, community classroom. Nobody, nobody that I know actually like follows a, measure, a measurement. Um, it's, just, it's just what we beaters do. It's either a wingspan or about that much. So about that much, about the amount that's being shown in my screen right now, six to eight inches, no, no big deal. And I'm just going to make an overhand knot, okay? So for me, that's pretty, it's pretty um, automatic, but basically all you're doing is making a loop and pulling that tail through the loop. And you wanna make sure that your, let's see if I can see what I'm doing here, that, that, um, that knot is slipping up and down, that it's not, you haven't done like a, an overhand or a surgeon's knot so that that knot isn't moving. That knot should move and be fluid, okay? And honestly, if you don't have a crochet hook, you could probably do this just as finger crochet, um, but that's a class for a different day. We're using a crochet hook today. I haven't, I haven't actually perfected that class. It's just something that kind of came to me. So I thought I would put it out there. It's one of the things that I used to do as a kid is finger crochet. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that loop and I'm going to, I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to put it on my crochet hook. Okay. And much like regular crochet, you don't really have to worry about, um, like things on, well, I shouldn't say things undoing themselves, but sometimes in, in certain techniques, you need to make sure that everything you're holding it really well, but here, like you could put it down and walk away and nothing's going to come apart on you. So the basic chain stitch, for those of you who have never crocheted before, or who might not know what a crochet stitch is or a chain stitch. Okay. So here we've got crochet hook. And I'm holding my thread like I would if I'm crocheting. So let's, let me just take a pause right here um, and show you how I'm holding my thread. So I have my beads off to my left and I'm taking my hand underneath. Is that what I'm doing? Yes, I'm taking my hand around top and underneath and just holding this in place, you'll find that um, different ways of holding the thread work better or worse for other different people. I um, hold the tail, this is the tail down here, where's my tail, here's my tail, my nice long tail. I'm gonna hold that in between my thumb and my third and fourth finger. And then I have that thread looped over my first finger. I think that's about, that's how I do it. Well, we'll see. Maybe that might change. We'll figure that out. Okay. Um, so watch what I do with my crochet hook. I'm going to come forward and back. So I'm looping that thread around my crochet hook and I'm using the hook part just to pull it through the loop. I'm going to do this like a gazillion times. So we're going to see this over and over again. So that's my first chain stitch. And I might need to, to tighten it up a little bit. I could tighten up it up all the way if I wanted to, or I could keep it loose or if I wanted to, but since I tightened that one up all the way, let's do another one. Okay. So um, crochet hook comes toward me back around. So I'm going, let's say, toward me and back and around, I'm trying to figure out if that's clockwise or counterclockwise, but it's more in like a, a loop-de-loop -loop kind of a way. And because it's a hook, I'm gonna hook that thread and pull it through the loop. And that's really um, all crochet is, is hooking the thread and pulling it through the loop. Everything in addition is just how many, how many different ways you loop the thread and pull it through which loop, but that's all crochet is, is just hooking the thread and pulling it through the loop. So I have now done four chain stitches, okay? You can do four, you can do five, you can do two. Um, again, this is a very loose 
and fun project, not something to get stressed about, not something to worry about counts so much with. But the fun first thing that we get to do is now move a bead down into place. We've done a couple of chain stitches. So now it's time to move our bead, our first bead down into place. I'm going to do that same chain stitch, stitch motion around and back through and pull it through the loop. I'm not going to worry about Tammy is actually asking a really good question on in, in the chat. Never crocheted before. How do you keep the loops the same approximate size? I am going to give you permission in this project and when you are first learning how to do this to not worry about making your loops the same size, because what will generally end up happening is they will find their own. They will find the size that they want to be. But if you do not want to take my permission to have your loops be different sizes, that's okay. I will tell you how you can make your loops similar size. The first way to do that is to make sure that you're holding everything at relatively the same tension the, as you're going along. So see how I didn't do any pulling, I didn't do any zhuzhing, I didn't do any anything. Those loops, if I don't give them any reason to move, will form the approximate size of the hook. So if I want these loops to be smaller, I can use a different size hook. Or if I want them to be bigger, I do have over here a great big crochet hook. So let me just show you how the different sized crochet hook is going to work. So you can sort of see that loop on the top is way bigger than the loops on the bottom. That's because my crochet hook is much bigger. And I would definitely recommend checking out Marley Bird's classes and Tamara classes um, and they teach crochet and knitting for the Michaels community classroom and they're amazing. Um, Marley is a good friend of mine and just lots and lots of really cool tips and tricks to learn about all of those fiber arts. But today we're beading. So we're going to put another bead down into place and you can see I did take that large loop out um, because I wanted to keep my my loops smaller. So that's the great thing about crochet is if you make a mistake, you can just pull the loops out. But it's also the thing that you have to be wary about in crochet is that you don't pull your loops out if you don't want them to. So for this design, what I've decided is that I'm going to chain two, I'm going to move one bead into place, and then I'm going to capture that bead, and I'm going to chain two. And each time I do this, I lose space here, right? The crochet or the chain stitching eats up a lot of the thread. But the cool thing about the beelon and keeping it on the spool is I can just keep on undoing the spool, moving the beads down, and then I have more room to work. So again, I'm holding my work here in between my, my hands and different crocheters, like I mentioned, hold their work in different, different ways. So experiment, see if the way that I hold it doesn't feel right for you, um, do it a different way. See, see if you can figure it out. So um, I'm just going to take this up to speed a couple of times. And I think I'm actually doing three in between. Now let's, let's actually count and see. So that's my chain to hold the bead into place. And then I'm going to do one, two, and then I'm going to move my bead into place. So that's a good idea is to, um, to keep that rhythm or that, that, um, that saying over and over in your head, chain two, move my bead into place, chain one, two, move my bead into place, or again, whatever works for you. But here I'm moving my bead into place and I'm gonna slow that back down again. Taking my crochet hook toward me, back around to the back and just pulling that loop through the loop. Again, all crochet is, is pulling loops through loops. And once you get that, I feel like everything else becomes so clear. <laughs> Sometimes you're making three loops and pulling them through three loops. Sometimes you're making 
I don't know, six loops and pulling it through one loop. It's just, it depends on, on how, how you go. And in all of those different things, you can incorporate beats. So one, two, three. And you can see there, and I did that on purpose. I kind of got my hand um, a, little, a little scrunched up against that bead. And you can see my loops are a little smaller. But in the final analysis in the, um, in the necklace that I'm making, my, um, my, my, uh, in, not my inconsistency, but the, the asymmetries is actually part of the design. So two really good questions have come through um, and I am going to answer that as I go a little bit slower. So there was a request to go a little bit slower and I'm gonna go back down to slow motion in a second. But I do want to touch on um, this question, which is, are you worried about the size of the bead hole and the friction cutting the belon? That is a really, really good and astute question because one of the things that we talk about a lot when we're making jewelry and when we're doing bead stringing is about the what happens when the beads move around and they cut, it, where they can cut through the your stringing material whether you are making a beaded necklace with beetle on bead stringing cord, or you're doing a crochet piece with belon. The short answer is yes, it is possible. I'm not worried about it though. And for a couple of different reasons, the first of which is there isn't any additional pressure being put on these beads. So one of the things that happens when we're doing bead stringing is Sometimes we, I'm going to bring this really, really close for a couple of moments and see if I can do this without bumping the camera too, too much. What ends up happening, and one of the reasons why the, why you need to be super careful about your stringing materials and friction is because of stringing things too tight. And when things are strung really tight, that's when your beads start cutting your wire. Are they moving around here a lot? Yes, but they're not doing it with force. So eventually, could they cut through the material? Yes, they could eventually cut through the material, but I'm not as worried about that in this instance as I would be if I were making a beaded design that A was gonna be heavy, that B was going to be um, have a lot more tension against it. Here the beads are really just kind of floating and hanging out. Um, I hope that an hel helps answer the question a little bit. All right, so now that I am way close, let's see if I can get my hands in here really, really well to talk about adding the bead in super slow motion. So bead comes down, and this is one of those things that you don't need to overthink it. Um, you can almost think of it as the beads not even there. Beads just kind of came into place. And I'm going to continue doing that chain stitch just like I did before. See, there's no difference between those three chain stitches than as, as there was when I put that bead in. Is that bead a little bit loose in there? Yeah, but I'm okay with that because that's partly the style of this piece. Now I'm just doing a quick measure and I've already got 12 for 16 inches. That's already a nice necklace size, right? But I'm going to keep going because the de design decision that I'm making right now is because I have plenty of beads here. I'm going to go ahead and keep going. I am going to show <laughs> a couple more times 
And maybe I want to make this into a lariat. Maybe I want to make this into a, um, a necklace that I can wrap around. I don't know, maybe I want this to be, there's so many different things that I want this to be. Um, but one of the things that I want, I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to is getting my loops to be the same size. That was a really good question um, from the beginning is if you do want your, I'm sorry, not your beads, your loops. If you want your beads, your, I keep saying beads, if you want your loops to be the same size, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your tension even and your loops even. So if you're paying a little bit more attention than me, <laughs> um, doing several different things at once, not the least of which is trying to keep up with comments and making sure that my hands are in the center of the screen. Um, if you're paying a little bit more attention, you can get your loops really nice and even. Another great question, how do you add beads if you didn't put enough on in the beginning? That's always the like, oh man, <laughs> you get to, the, to the, um, the end of your beads and all of a sudden you realize that you haven't added enough or you haven't added enough. No problem. It does take a little bit of, let's try to stop that from moving. It takes a little bit of guesswork though because what's gonna end up happening is you're going to have to pull out enough material from your spool so that you can add beads on the other end, okay? To be fair, what you could do, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't do this, you can just cut your bead, cut your thread here, add some more beads, tie a knot and keep going. Because in all honesty, in this kind of design, when you are wearing it, you're probably not going to be able to see another knot, right? E very, very easy to hide a knot in the stitching, especially if you have a bunch of, of um, a bunch of strands, that's what I'm looking for, in your design. What I generally do though, is just pull out a bunch of thread from my from my bobbin and and um, put them on the other side. What we did not talk about in the very beginning is how to get the beads on here. Obviously we could use a collapsible eye needle, which my collapsible eye needle that I just grabbed is a little mangled, but this is a collapsible eye needle. And you can just use that to put on whatever beads you need. But the cool thing about the Belon cord, or one of the cool things, one of the things that I really like about it is because it's nylon, you can use a cord cutter or a thread burner to cut it. So, heat up my cord cutter. Oops. Let's heat up my cord cutter. And my battery's dead already. Man, I just use this one. So Leslie is asking what if, well, while I'm trying to figure out why my cord cutter isn't working. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I'll get, get back to that question in just a second. Um, the thread burner, the cord cutter will cut through and seal the end. So if your holes are big enough, and one of the things that I love about the Michaels beads is that they generally have nice large holes. You don't even need a needle to be able to get many of these beads onto the bead line. Okay, and that's all I did. I didn't even use a needle when I, um, when I threaded all of these up. And my beads are actually all different sizes. You can see here, let me just pull this up a little bit so that I stop bumping it. My beads are all different sizes. They are all round, that's fair, except for this one at the very, very end. But you can see here, the beads are all different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter. They still get captured into the chain stitches the exact same way. 
All right, so here's a good problem. Uh-oh, here's my crochet hook. There's my work. So what do I do? Uh-oh, I've lost my loop. I've lost my chain. I've lost everything. Not to worry. I want to very carefully come here and find that loop. Because we've been talking about loops, right? It's very easy to take these loops out or just as easy, I should say, to take the loops out as it is to put the loops in. So if by chance you drop your work, you drop your crochet hook, um, there's a cat that comes through and gives you a little bit of trouble, um, no, no worries. It is an, an easy enough project to come back to. Uh, one of the challenges that I have with, for example, Kumihimo is in certain stitches or in certain weaves, I should say, it is very hard for me to figure out where I was. So if I don't park my work um, and, and make sure that, I, that I've either finished my project or I know where I'm, I've left off, um, it's hard for me to kind of get back into it. Um, the same is true for what? For trying to think of another technique that might be a challenge for getting back into the rhythm of it. Um, but with crochet, you can generally, once you kind of see where the chains are, see where your stitches are, you can get back to it. So let's see, I'm seeing my initial stitches seem to disappear, not sure why. So I'm wondering if maybe you're pulling them too tight because if you see, if I go like that, my, that's, that stitch is gonna disappear. So let me do another one. If I pull this through and then pull it tight, disappear. Okay, so you don't want to pull your stitches so tight that they disappear. That's why it's cool that you have that, that little slip knot built in there because they will, especially because of the way that the, um, the Bilan acts, they'll loosen, they'll loosen up. But if you were using like silk cord, for example, or a Nymo, or I'm trying to think what else, um, like a dandelion or a wildfire, all of which would work for crochet. Um, you just kind of have to know what the materials are and what the, the challenges and the limitations and the, the way that you wanna work them. All right, so let's see, I have about, what about 30 inches? That's a nice length right there. Um, let me do, I'm going to do two more really, really slowly. Okay. Just so that we make sure that we've got this down before we move on to finishing. So around and through, and then move my next bead into place around and through to capture that bead around and through for a chain stitch and around and through for another chain stitch. And do that one last time. Add, end on this nice blue bead. It's funny when I'm going through this, I'm remembering the different projects that I use these beads for. So around my hook and through once, twice, and three chain stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to say that I'm done. Okay, you might not be done. You might want yours to be longer. You might have wanted yours to be shorter. Um, you might just wanna keep going to make the longest chain of crochet that you've ever made. That is totally, totally your prerogative. But for our intents and purposes for today, I'm going to finish. So what I wanna do in order to finish is I'm gonna just give myself a nice amount of thread right here. And I can pull this out, but I like to leave my hook in just to, so that I, kind of see what I'm doing and where I'm going. And if my scissors were where they would be or should be, they would be right here. And indeed they are. So now I wanna make sure I don't wanna cut anywhere in this loop. And I certainly don't wanna cut on my chain. I wanna cut the 
um, the belon from the spool. And I'm gonna leave a generous amount, about 10 inches or so. And where that loop is, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull the loop through and tighten. And what this does is it makes it a knot here. So slip knot we started with on this end, slip knot we are finishing with over here on this end. So I have my chain with all of my beads here. And the easiest way of finishing the, this off is what we're going to do today. There are tons of different um, fancy finishes, different ways of adding um, like a little macrame slide finish like I do in my adjustable bracelets class. But for today, we're gonna keep it simple. Simple project, fun technique, simple ending. And sometimes the simplest endings are the, the best ones for the project. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two ends here and they're different lengths and that's okay. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot. So just an overhand knot, just like this. Okay, I'm gonna tighten that up. <sighs> um, I have been using glue more these days, but for the Belon, because it's such a hardy um, thread, <laughs> it's kind of a weird way of calling it, but it is, it's a strong thread. That knot's not going anywhere. And I wouldn't add a drop of hypocement or a drop of beetle on bead string and glue because what that could do is tend to make it a little hard and then it would be a little scratchy on your, um, on your neck. And I, I would not like that. And then to finish this off, because this is going to be the back of my necklace. This is, I've made a longer necklace. I generally um, make necklaces that are about 16 to 18 inches. Um, and then I forget that it's sometimes fun to make a longer necklace. So I'm glad that I remembered to do that today. So all I'm doing here is I'm grabbing two more beads from my, from my bead soup mix over here. It always brings me great joy to use um, beads up for my bead soup mix. Um, and I'm just eyeballing about, maybe about two inches. And I keep pulling my, um, my work just slightly out of frame because that's where my measuring tape is. Um, I highly recommend um, having some sort of a measuring device at the ready, um, either tape a ruler down or get some of this really fun um, uh, uh, washi tape that is a ruler. It's just, I find myself using it all the time. Now I just tied not just one overhand knot, but two. So let me just show that one more time. Ah, sometimes it is harder to get out. Okay, so, right, an overhand knot, we would just go around once, but I like to do a double overhand knot just for, just for added safety. And because those Michael beads, Michael's beads oftentimes have bigger holes, it's better to, um, to have a little bit of a bigger knot. And this is always the, the moment, is it gonna fit? Oh, it's not gonna fit, excellent. Okay, it's gonna hold nice and tight. And I can either come in with my scissors or with my cord cutter and just cut and seal that just for a nice clean finish. And let's go ahead and do that on the other side and we will be good to go. Now you can make this even or you can make it a different, a different length. Doesn't matter, it's just a, a little, little extra dangle do for the back, just a little something fun um, to make it a little bit more clean and a little bit more, um, a little bit more finished. We just did an, an overhand knot to finish it off, right? Nothing fancy, but we can always make it a little bit more, a little bit more extra. This one I'm gonna cut with my scissors just so that you can see the difference. And the good thing about the bee line, um, or something just to be aware of is it doesn't really fray that much here on the end. Um, even though I sealed this side with the wildfire, it's nice and sealed, but this is, will eventually probably fry out, but it's not right now. That's a little bit of a better view right there. Good. It's a really, really fun material. All right. So 
Let's see, I'm gonna box this up just a little bit. You can see that is how I finished it off. This is my whole design and just really fun. Um, what I really like and what I think becomes even um, more interesting about the beaded crochet designs is when you start layering them up. So of course, we have our, our one layer necklace that we did today, but once you start adding layers, that's where I think it becomes really, really interesting and really fun. And again, super fast technique. I never really went up to speed with doing this, but you can knock these out in minutes because you're just doing chain stitch, chain stitch, chain a stitch, move a bead down, do a couple bit more chain stitches, move another bead down, and in probably 15 to 20 minutes, you could have a really big, a really nice, um, a nice, um, a nice finished design. Um, Penny is asking, could you fill the ends with beads and make it like a tassel for the front? 100%. Yes, I love that idea. To instead of this part being in the back, put this part in the front, add a whole bunch of, of fringes and tassels and dangle dues down here. Um, you could add a pendant. You could add, gosh, I mean, the possibilities are limitless. Once you have this as your strong design, you could do a million things here in the front. So Felicia, I think I'm going to model my new necklace. It's a nice long, um, long length. Again, I tend to make all of my necklaces really short, right? I like kind of short necklaces and layering them up, but having a nice long necklace is really I like that. I'm gonna wear that for the rest of the day and maybe tomorrow as well. So one thing about teaching so many jewelry making classes, you have so much jewelry that I don't have like my rotation. If I were to wear something once, I would probably be able to wear that one thing or one thing each day of the year and then probably the next year as well. So it's a, it's a nice problem to have for sure. But can we ever have too much jewelry? Absolutely not. So thank you all so much, beauty friends, for hanging out with me today. This is one of my favorite my favorite classes to teach because it's so um, it's so versatile. And once you know that chain stitch, you can add it to a million different things. Use whatever you have in your um, in your supply stash, and then also it uses up so many beads who might who might not have a future, who might be sad beads all by themselves or hanging out in a in a jar of bead soup for the rest of their days, but this way you can take them out and put them center stage and really showcase all of those wonderful leftover beads from projects. So let's see, my upcoming classes, we are back on, we're back on the schedule. We, um, we took a couple of weeks in February off, just looking over here on the schedule to see um, what's happening. We have got classes going through March and April and May on Wednesdays and a couple of Saturdays even with me, um, Meredith from Beadalon, and then Sarah Lovecraft will also be back on the schedule teaching for us as well. We've got some great projects coming up, including a couple of our new paid classes, the first of which is going to be mine on March 30th. And we are going to be making these really gorgeous tree of life pendants, which I actually have hung from a crochet, a beaded crochet um, rope. So again, as we were talking about adding tassels from the front, you could actually add tassels on both sides and then use it as um, a different type of design. Of course, my hair and all of my other jewelry is in the way, but if I get this going, you can see how it can work. And Felicia is lovingly posting the, um, the links for the classes. So if you make any of these designs, please go ahead and post them on your socials. Do you use the hashtag make it with Michaels, or I've been seeing you made it with Michaels too. So I think that they prefer make it with Michaels, but you definitely want to follow both of those hashtags because the projects that come up are amazing. And if you do, please be sure to tag me because I love seeing what you make. Definitely do a tag of Beetle on um, because we are the ones teaching the classes on behalf of the Michaels community classroom, 
but also please tag me at Meredith Joy Designs um, because I love seeing what people make. So wonderful. Um, I think that that is it for me today. Thanks, Felicia, for being a awesome moderator. Thanks everyone for participating. And until next time, happy beating.